Logic is the study of how we ought to reason. Not how we do reason, how we should reason. Claiming that logic is the study of how we ought to reason is really similar to claiming that the study of mathematics is all about numbers. There's so much more to mathematics and there's so much more to logic. In fact, I'm going to make that analogy to help bring out what logic really is. When we say logic, we mean something like when we say mathematics. In mathematics, you have different ways of studying the relationship between things. You can do geometry by studying the way things are related spatially. You might study quantity and number theory, that's doing arithmetic. Or you can study algebra and structures, maybe shapes. All of these kinds of things you could be doing sometimes you're good at one and bad at the other, are all mathematics. Reasoning about how objects interact with the three-dimensional space around that object is spatial reasoning. Thinking about the way things could have been or should have been or might possibly be is modal reasoning. Conceiving of a conclusion as supported by premises or not supported by enough premises is structural reasoning. So logic is the study of how we ought to reason, but there's different things to reason about and there's different ways to reason. So it's slightly more complicated than just the study of how we ought to reason. Logic is about what it makes sense to infer from the information you already have. And so you need a starting point. You need to make a few assumptions about some things and then say, where does it make sense to go from here? In mathematics, you have equations like this, 1 plus x equals 2. And just like mathematics gives you the formula, logic also gives you formulas. This one is a valid argument form called modus ponens. And just like in math, you'll need to have an idea about what you can put in for those variables. And for this modus ponens argument, if we had P be somebody cheated and Q be somebody failed, then we get this valid argument. Whether or not it's true doesn't matter when we're discussing the valid form. Because we followed the form consistently, we know that we have a valid argument. Let's finish the analogy. We have this equation. 1 plus x equals 2, and we want to figure out what the variable is. So we start with the assumption that maybe it's 1. Then we can check our work by plugging it in and verifying that yes, 1 plus 1 is 2. Like mathematics, logic, and other subfields are objective, but that doesn't mean that there are no assumptions to be made. We have to start somewhere, like what kind of evidence counts? What counts as evidence. We say, these are the things I value, these are the things I think are true, these are the things I'm not sure about but plausibly, and then you say, how should we reason from here? This allows for two people who follow the rules of logic to form totally different, even opposite conclusions, and both be logical and reasonable. Consider two people with very different life experiences and values and assumptions. One might think God exists because he thinks it's all about having faith. The other disagrees with that starting point and wants proof, empirical evidence. Logic has arguments in which there are premises and conclusions. Hopefully, you've got good premises that are required for the conclusion. And the conclusion you draw really is supported by good premises and underlying true assumptions. You've got to be really careful, though, because if you mistakenly assume that Obama is Persian and you follow a modus opponents, for example, you would have a valid argument that there was a Persian president of the United States. You can be perfectly reasonable and correctly follow all the rules of reasoning that are brought to us by logic and still be wrong. Logic does not guarantee the truth. You can be logical and wrong.